September 24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jeremiah chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. The following is a record of what Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, prophesied. He was one of the priests who lived at Anathoth in the territory of the tribe of Benjamin. The Lord began to speak to him in the thirteenth year that Josiah, son of Ammon, ruled over Judah. The Lord also spoke to him when Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, ruled over Judah. And he continued to speak to him until the fifth month of the eleventh year that Zedekiah, son of Josiah, ruled over Judah. That was when the people of Jerusalem were taken into exile. The Lord said to me, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I chose you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. I answered, O Lord God, I really do not know how to speak well enough for that, for I am too young. The Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young, but go to whomever I send you and say whatever I tell you. Do not be afraid of those to whom I send you, for I will be with you to protect you, says the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I will most assuredly give you the words you are to speak for me. Know for certain that I hereby give you the authority to announce to nations and kingdoms that they will be uprooted and torn down, destroyed and demolished, rebuilt and firmly planted. Later the Lord asked me, What do you see, Jeremiah? I answered, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said, You have observed correctly. This means I am watching to make sure my threats are carried out. The Lord again asked me, What do you see? I answered, I see a pot of boiling water. It is tipped toward us from the north. Then the Lord said, This means destruction will break out from the north on all who live in the land. For I will soon summon all the peoples of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord. They will come and their kings will set up their thrones near the entrances of the gates of Jerusalem. They will attack all the walls surrounding it and all the towns in Judah. In this way, I will pass sentence on the people of Jerusalem and Judah because of all their wickedness. For they rejected me and offered sacrifices to other gods, worshiping what they made with their own hands. But you, Jeremiah, get yourself ready. Go and tell these people everything I instruct you to say. Do not be terrified of them, or I will give you good reason to be terrified of them. I, the Lord, hereby promise to make you as strong as a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall. You will be able to stand up against all who live in the land, including the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and all the people of the land. They will attack you, but they will not be able to overcome you, for I will be with you to rescue you, says the Lord. The Lord spoke to me. He said, Go and declare in the hearing of the people of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I have fond memories of you, how devoted you were to me in your early years. I remember how you loved me like a new bride. You followed me through the wilderness, through a land that had never been planted. Israel was set apart to the Lord. They were like the first fruits of a harvest to him. All who tried to devour them were punished. Disaster came upon them, says the Lord. Now listen to what the Lord has to say, you descendants of Jacob, all you family groups from the nation of Israel. This is what the Lord says. What fault could your ancestors have possibly found in me that they strayed so far from me? They paid allegiance to worthless idols and so became worthless to me. They did not ask, where is the Lord who delivered us out of Egypt? who brought us through the wilderness, through a land of desert sands and rift valleys, through a land of drought and deep darkness, through a land in which no one travels and where no one lives. I brought you into a fertile land so you could enjoy its fruits and its rich bounty. But when you entered my land, you defiled it. You made the land I call my own loathsome to me. Your priest did not ask, where is the Lord? Those responsible for teaching my law did not really know me. Your rulers rebelled against me. Your prophets prophesied in the name of the god Baal. They all worshipped idols that could not help them. So once more I will state my case against you, says the Lord. I will also state it against your children 
and grandchildren. Go west across the sea to the coast of Cyprus and see. Send someone east to Kadar and have them look carefully. See if such a thing as this has ever happened. Has a nation ever changed its gods even though they are not really gods at all? But my people have exchanged me, their glorious God, for a God that cannot help them at all. Be amazed at this, O heavens. Be shocked and utterly dumbfounded, says the Lord. Do so because my people have committed a double wrong. They have rejected me, the fountain of life-giving water, and they have dug cisterns for themselves, crack cisterns which cannot even hold water. Israel is not a slave, is he? He was not born into slavery, was he? If not, why then is he being carried off? Like lions, his enemies roar victoriously over him. They raise their voices in triumph. They have laid his land waste. His cities have been burned down and deserted. Even the soldiers from Memphis and Tappanese have cracked your skulls, people of Israel. You have brought all this on yourself, Israel by deserting the Lord your God when he was leading you along the right path. What good will it do you then to go down to Egypt to seek help from the Egyptians? What good will it do you to go over to Assyria to seek help from the Assyrians? Your own wickedness will bring about your punishment. Your unfaithful acts will bring down discipline on you. Know then and realize how utterly harmful it was for you to reject me, the Lord your God, to show no respect for me, says the Lord God, who rules over all. Indeed, long ago you threw off my authority and refused to be subject to me. You said, I will not serve you. Instead, you gave yourself to other gods on every high hill and under every green tree, like a prostitute sprawls out before her lovers. I planted you in the land like a special vine of the very best stock. Why in the world have you turned into something like a wild vine that produces rotten, foul-smelling grapes. You can try to wash away your guilt with a strong detergent. You can use as much soap as you want, but the stain of your guilt is still there for me to see, says the Lord God. How can you say I have not made myself unclean? I have not paid allegiance to the gods called Baal. Just look at the way you have behaved in the Valley of Hinnom. Think about the things you have done there. You are like a flighty young female camel that rushes here and there, crisscrossing its path. You are like a wild female donkey brought up in the wilderness. In her lust, she sniffs the wind to get a scent of a male. No one can hold her back when she is in heat. None of the males need wear themselves out chasing after her. At mating time, she is easy to find. Do not chase after other gods until your shoes wear out and your throats become dry. But you say it is useless for you to try and stop me because I love those foreign gods and want to pursue them. Just as a thief has to suffer dishonor when he is caught, so the people of Israel will suffer dishonor for what they have done. So will their kings and officials, their priests and their prophets. They say to a wooden idol, You are my father. They say to a stone image, You gave birth to me. Yes, they have turned away from me instead of turning to me. Yet when they are in trouble, they say, Come and save us. But where are the gods you made for yourselves? Let them save you when you are in trouble. The sad fact is that you have as many gods as you have towns, Judah. Why do you try to refute me? All of you have rebelled against me, says the Lord. It did no good for me to punish your people. They did not respond to such correction. You slaughtered your prophets like a voracious lion. You people of this generation, listen to what the Lord says. Have I been like a wilderness to you, Israel? Have I been like a dark and dangerous land to you? Why then do you say we are free to wander? We will not come to you any more. Does a young woman forget to put on her jewels? Does a bride forget to put on her bridal attire? But my people have forgotten me for more days than can even be counted. My, how good you have become at chasing after your lovers. Why, you could even teach prostitutes a thing or two. Even your clothes are stained with the lifeblood of the poor who had not done anything wrong. You did not catch them breaking into your homes. Yet in spite of all these things you have done, you say I've not done anything wrong. So the Lord cannot really be angry with me anymore. But watch out. I will bring down judgment on you because you say I have not committed any sin. 
Why do you constantly go about changing your political allegiances? You will get no help from Egypt, just as you got no help from Assyria. Moreover, you will come away from Egypt with your hands covering your faces in sorrow and shame, because the Lord will not allow your reliance on them to be successful, and you will not gain any help from them. God, Jeremiah is one of my favorite prophets, but there is no way in the world that I would want to be him. I love studying him because uh, even though a lot of people call him the weeping prophet, um, and he did cry for Israel, he was definitely the persistent prophet. I know his strength came from you, but holy cow, did he have strength. It is amazing to me to read the stories of what Jeremiah had to go through as a prophet. He served under a couple kings. One hated him uh, and did everything possible to shut him up. The other one would listen to him and then pretty much do exactly opposite of what he, what Jeremiah told him to do. Um, you ask him to be single for his whole life, so he was alone, and I definitely know that feeling, and so that's got to be hard. He was young on top of it, um, so he had that whole, gosh, my whole life is ahead of me, and, and now you've asked me to do this, and on top of it, throughout this incredibly difficult ministry that you gave him uh, as a prophet we know that there was probably only two converts from all of his talking <laughs> uh, one uh, was one of the ones that wrote down a lot of these um, stories and poetry and, and different pieces of ideas that, that Jeremiah spoke and thought um, and, a, and another one was a, a different gentleman that they came in contact with a eunuch but it is so hard for me, God, to read about Jeremiah, though. The things that I have gone through in my life, especially the last three years of my life, have been so incredibly painful. Beyond anything that I knew was possible to, to, to deal with that kind of pain. I, I can't even talk about it or vocalize in words that pain. I know you know that pain. Um, the people listening aren't going to, to know exactly what I'm talking about. But without the right words, it's hard to vocalize how much pain and persecution has happened uh, in my life in the last couple of years. And so listening to Jeremiah's story and what you ask him to do, you said, I want you to do this. I'm going to be watching over you. Here's what I expect of you, and here's how it must be done. I will be with you, but you must do this. If you do this, I will protect you. Now, just so we're clear, Jeremiah, people will be very mean and cruel to you, and you'll be persecuted, but I'll be with you. Okay, God, that's hard. <laughs> that's really, really hard. And, you know, it's really easy on paper to go, oh, but he had faith and he had God and he had God's strength. But sometimes when that persecution comes one after another, after another, after another, and you don't even have time to catch your breath, it's really hard. And this whole idea that people always say, oh, God will never give you more than you can handle. Yeah, you will. <laughs> You very clearly will because you want us to turn it over to you. You want to give us more than we can handle so that we understand what that process looks like of your strength, of your guidance, of relying on you. And again, it sounds good on paper, but it is one of the hardest lessons to learn. We're not very dependent people, especially not anymore. We're very independent people. Um, we're very self-focused people, I think kind of now more than ever. And so to learn a lesson of being dependent upon you to carry our pain, to carry our burden, burdens, to protect us in the middle of persecution doesn't mean it's gonna, the persecution is going to stop. It just means you're going to protect us uh, in that situation. I remember when I used to read Jeremiah's story and, and just have all this empathy for him and just I was in awe that he was that strong of a prophet. And now that I have been dealing with some of the same stuff, I am in more awe of him because he seemed to do it so eloquently. 
he had his struggles, but he seemed to just rely on you fully, God. I'm just too human. I struggle with this, and you know how hard I struggle with this. You know that depression washes over me in huge, gigantic black waves of trying to deal with some of this, trying to deal with the pain, of trying to deal with um, losing so many people in my life in the last three years in succession, one right after another after another, of having people intentionally, physically, and emotionally hurt me. Um, it's hard, God. And so in this, in this story, looking at it from a new perspective with new eyes and knowing that some of the stuff that Jeremiah went through, I have gone through in different parallel versions in my own life. And yet he continued to go back to you. He continued to rely on you. He continued to trust you. You even ask him, what do you see? And he said the part about the almond tree. And the almond tree, as we know, if you study, <laughs> if you study the Bible, we know the almond tree was the first tree uh, to kind of pop up in spring. And it was the tree that kind of looked over as spring arrived. And so that was your concept. I'm going to be watching over you for a couple of reasons. One, because I need to watch over you. I want you to know that I'm there for you. Two, I need to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing because I'm going to help you, guide you, and discipline you if I need to. Three, I'm going to be right in there to fulfill the words that you're going to speak on my behalf. I am going to take these people down. I am going to do exactly what you are talking about. Um, I am going to bring judgment in all of these different areas. And when you speak to people, they aren't going to believe you, but I will be there for you. And God, on paper... I know that you are here for me. You have promised to take hold of my right hand and be here with me. You have promised to be there in my darkest times. You have promised to take on my yoke, which is heavy, and allow me to have a lighter one. I know all the promises in the Bible. I can read them. But the difference with Jeremiah is he had a heart that accepted those words. It wasn't just something that he had read or something at that time that had been told to him. He truly, passionately believed it in his heart. I don't know. I'm struggling with that. And you know that I'm struggling with it because we have this conversation all the time. How do I rectify God in my life, my struggles, with somebody like Jeremiah who in all honesty, probably had way worse persecution in his life than I do. Mine just feels big because it's happening to me. And yet he still continually sought you, sought you, sought you, uh, believed in your strength, believed in you, um, relied on all of the promises that you gave him. How do I get from where I am right now, God, to this amazing heart change like what Jeremiah went through that even in his darkest times when he was being so evilly persecuted he kept on he didn't give up he didn't get frustrated to the point of lashing out and being angry and giving up he just relied on your strength and I don't say just as though it's something flippant it's something that I truly wish I had the abilities, the processes, the desire, the understanding to do. Because I'm struggling, God. I'm struggling a lot. So thank you for the timing of reading Jeremiah. As I said, he's always been one of my favorite prophets. Just because his stories are so amazing and what he went through and who he was during that time. But now it's going to mean something else as I struggle with and am being persecuted for, for the things I'm doing in this world. And it is a great reminder of how much you love us, God, because you're willing to give us the strength we need to persevere in those situations. In your son's name I pray, amen.